I'm sure you've heard people throw around words before like bath salts and ecstasy. Those are both types of drugs. But what are they, and how illegal are they? There are a lot of drugs, but we won't be talking about alcohol or nicotine in this video. We're going to be covering some of the most illegal drugs. Most people watching this video are American, so we'll be covering scheduled drugs in America. These are really well-known drugs, so while they might be scheduled differently in other countries, most countries have still made almost all of these drugs illegal. When I say a drug in America is illegal, what do I even mean? The Controlled Substances Act is a federal law in the United States that regulates the manufacturing, importation, possession, use, and distribution of certain drugs. It was passed in 1970 to combat drug abuse and dependence. The Controlled Substances Act classifies drugs into five schedules based on their potential for abuse, medical use, and safety. Schedule 1 drugs have a high potential for abuse, no accepted medical use, and no safety. The CSA also outlines the process for adding or removing drugs from these schedules and is influenced by international treaties. The law has undergone multiple amendments over the years to adapt to changing circumstances. Drugs in Schedule 1 have a high potential for abuse and no accepted medical uses. Drugs in Schedule 2 have a high potential for abuse and sometimes are allowed for medical uses with some severe restrictions. Drugs in Schedule 3 have a medium potential for abuse, but they usually also have accepted medical uses. Drugs in Schedule 4 have moderate abuse potential, but they also have accepted medical uses. Finally, drugs in Schedule 5 have the lowest potential for abuse, but they do have accepted medical uses. I'm not a lawyer, so you shouldn't mistake any of this for legal advice, but if a drug is illegal, getting involved with it might get you into some trouble. So scheduled drugs are drugs that the Controlled Substances Act in America has made illegal. Sometimes stuff that falls outside of the Controlled Substances Act, but is considered an analog, might be prosecuted under the Analog Act. I recently finished listening to an audiobook by Jordan Rubin called Bizarro, discussing the drug Spice and whether or not they're considered analogs. I'll include a link to that in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. And I just wanted to thank Jordan for sending me that book. I thought it was really interesting, and even though I'm not talking about Spice in this video, as we're mostly just covering relatively common drugs, there is almost an unlimited number of designer drugs that could be discussed. Why don't we start with this molecule here? This is cocaine. Cocaine is a stimulant drug derived from coca leaves. It's known for its euphoric effects when used recreationally. However, medically it's used as a local anesthetic in some procedures. Long-term use can lead to addiction and a range of physical and mental health issues. Cocaine is illegal in many countries, including the US, but coca leaves have been used historically by some cultures. Cocaine is actually only Schedule 2 because it has some limited medical uses. So because it's not Schedule 1, we can't put cocaine into S tier, so that means we're going to have to put it into A tier. You've probably heard of fentanyl before. Fentanyl has been involved in the ongoing opioid crisis around the world, but especially in North America. Oftentimes, fentanyl is a contaminant in drugs on the street, and this can lead to fentanyl overdose. Fentanyl is an extremely potent substance because it's actually 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Fentanyl can be used as a sedative. However, fentanyl is also used for pain management, especially in cancer patients and after surgeries. Fentanyl can be extremely fast-acting, which means it can cause an overdose even with a very small amount. Since it has use in some medical procedures, that means that fentanyl is only scheduled too. So for that reason, we can put fentanyl right into A tier as well. Next we have gamma-hydroxybutyric acid, also known as GHB. GHB is actually a naturally occurring neurotransmitter, which means all of us are breaking the law by having it in our brains right now, so uh, there's a lot of people to prosecute as a consequence. FBI, open up! GHB is a depressant drug, and GHB gained notoriety as a date rape drug due to its ability to incapacitate victims and impair their memory. Oftentimes people can overdose on GHB, and this can be life-threatening. Now, you might be surprised that even though GHB has some legitimate medical uses, such as for the treatment of narcolepsy, alcohol dependence, and cataplexy, as it's prescribed in the form of its sodium salt, Zyram or sodium oxybate, the FDA has still placed this into Schedule 1. So despite it being in our brains and still being prescribed in the form of sodium oxybate, this is a Schedule 1 substance. That seems a little bit inconsistent in my opinion, but I'm not a lawyer, so if you disagree, you can let me know down in the comments. Next we have heroin. Heroin is just diacetylmorphine. Morphine is a drug that was especially used historically for the treatment of pain, and diacetylmorphine is a more bioavailable form of this. This also goes by the name diamorphine. Morphine itself is derived from the opium poppy, and it's converted into heroin through some chemical modification. Heroin overdose can be fatal, and it's even been featured in shows such as Breaking Bad. While it's been used medicinally in the past, 
The US has placed it into Schedule 1 as well. So heroin is Schedule 1, even though fentanyl is Schedule 2. Since heroin is a Schedule 1 substance, that means that it's going to have to go right into S tier. This molecule is ketamine. You might have heard of ketamine before. Ketamine is a dissociative anesthetic used for anesthesia and pain management. It's also used to treat depression, although the effects of this are temporary. Ketamine's had a history since the 1960s, and it was used in the Vietnam War. Ketamine works by blocking NMDA receptors. Since ketamine has legitimate therapeutic uses, it's been placed into Schedule 3. So just to remind you what Schedule 3 means, that means that it has a medium abuse potential, as well as having accepted medical uses. So for that reason, we're going to be placing ketamine into B tier, since it's only Schedule 3. This next molecule is LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide. This is also called acid because it's the lysergic acid diethylamide, but that name is quite a misnomer. I think it should be called amide since it's an amide and not an acid. So that that's kind of dumb. Thanks guys. Thanks people who named that. LSD is a very potent psychedelic drug and it was originally made by Albert Hoffman as a derivative of lysergic acid. LSD has quite a complex history and it was even used in the Edgewood Arsenal. Since there are no current medical uses for LSD, it's also been placed into Schedule 1. So for that reason, we're going to have to put LSD right into S tier, which is appropriate for LSD. Next we have MDMA. MDMA also goes by the name Ecstasy, and MDMA just stands for Methylene Dioxymethamphetamine. MDMA is quite a common recreational drug, and it has psychedelic and stimulant-like properties due to its interaction with many different types of receptors. There were some studies for its use historically, and we're starting to see some more research into MDMA moving forward. Now at the moment, since these aren't widespread, this is still placed in Schedule 1, so for that reason, we're going to have to put MDMA right into S tier. It can also be placed in S tier because it's S for being studied. Maybe the FDA will soften its grip on this eventually, but at the moment, this is still a Schedule 1 substance. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned bath salts. This is the chemical responsible for bath salts. MDPV. MDPV stands for methylene dioxypyrovalerone. This actually looks a little bit like MDMA, just with a couple different modifications. This is a stimulant drug similar to the class of drugs known as cathinones. I wanted to keep this tier list relatively short, so I didn't include cathinone or related drugs in this, such as COT, but this one became widely known in the US due to an outbreak of cases of people having bad experiences with this drug. This gained popularity as a designer drug in the mid-2000s. It primarily acts as a dopamine norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, and it's known for its stimulant effects, which have been compared to cocaine and amphetamines. MDPV is placed in Schedule 1 in the US, meaning that it has no known medical uses. So for that reason, we're going to have to put bath salts right into S tier. We're going to have to make a bit of room in S tier because the FDA has scheduled a lot of compounds into this tier. Here we have mescaline. Mescaline is naturally occurring in peyote, amongst many other cacti. It's a naturally occurring psychedelic compound, which has been compared to LSD and psilocybin. Mescaline has had a long history of use in Native American religious ceremonies, as it's reported to evoke a unique mental state. Mescaline is classified as a Schedule I controlled substance in the U.S. However, there are some religious exemptions in the U.S. for Native American religious practices. So since there's some exemptions for this, I think we're going to have to put it halfway between S tier and A tier, because this one's kind of right between. There's some legitimate uses, but only for certain communities. You probably recognize this molecule, especially after the popularity of Breaking Bad. This is methamphetamine. This is the amphetamine portion of the molecule, and this is the meth portion. Now, you can see that there's a number of molecules here which have methyl groups, which is what we call a one carbon unit in chemistry, meth for methyl. So there's actually a lot of meths here, even though this is the only one that goes by the name meth. So a little bit annoying, but I guess this is what we have to put up with because somebody else gave the name, it became the common name, and once word dominance happens, it's pretty hard to combat words. Methamphetamine is a powerful stimulant drug. While it's used recreationally, it's also prescribed as the drug desoxin, which is used for the treatment of ADHD, as well as obesity. Right here we have a stereo center, which means that there's two different chiral forms of the drug. There's the dextro form of the drug, which is the one that typically is used for the treatment of ADHD, but the other form of the drug, levomethamphetamine, is used as a nasal decongestant, and it's widely available in the US as an over-the-counter drug, which I think is a bit interesting, given that meth is also scheduled, so kind of a strange occurrence there. In the US, meth is listed as a Schedule II drug, 
meaning that it has some legitimate medical uses as it can be used for the treatment of obesity or ADHD. So for that reason, we're going to have to put it into A tier. It's also not super illegal if you can buy it over the counter in pharmacies. So I think for that reason, we're going to have to put it like between A and B tier, because even though it's scheduled, it can be bought over the counter in the form of its Levo isomer. Is that going to have the same effect as regular meth? For most people, no, but it's something that's a little bit inconsistent. And so I wanted to comment on it. Okay, we have two left. This is psilocybin. Psilocybin occurs widely in nature, but it's most well known for its occurrence in the genus of mushrooms known as psilocybe. Psilocybin is a psychedelic compound which readily gets cleaved in the body to psilocin, where this phosphate group is replaced with an OH. This looks a lot like serotonin, and so it interacts with the 5-HT2A receptor, similar to other psychedelics. It was originally isolated in 1958 by Albert Hoffman, and despite having some historical use by some cultures, it's been placed into Schedule 1 in the United States, and it's illegal in many other countries. So since it's a Schedule 1 substance, even though it's naturally occurring, we're going to have to put this right into S tier. Even though psilocybin sounds like it starts with an S, it doesn't. It starts with a P. So uh, yeah, English language, thank you for silent letters. That's not super helpful, but it is what it is. Last but not least, because least would mean that it was Schedule 5, we have THC. THC stands for tetrahydrocannabinol, and it's the main psychoactive component of the cannabis plant. It affects the brain's endocannabinoid receptors, influencing thinking, memory, pleasure, coordination, and movement. It's listed as a controlled substance, but there are certain forms that are approved for medical use in the United States, as medical cannabis is allowed. However, at the federal level, THC is still scheduled. So while certain states have made it legal, or in the case of Canada, where it's completely legal, it's still federally scheduled in the United States. What schedule is it placed into? It's in Schedule 2, as it has some legitimate medical uses. But because it's still allowed in some contexts, I think we need to put it between A tier and B tier, since it's legalized in many places. Hopefully this has been an interesting discussion of several different common drugs, and their scheduling in the Controlled Substances Act in the United States. I hope that this has been interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.